Hello Math 122, in this video we'll be covering section 6.1 on antiderivatives. So we'll start out the video by defining an antiderivative. If we have a function big f of x and another function little f of x, and we have that the derivative of big f of x is equal to little f of x, we say that big f of x is an antiderivative of f of x. For example, let's say that big f of x is equal to x squared, and little f of x is equal to 2 times x. Then, if we take the derivative of big F of x, we get f prime of x is equal to 2 times x, which is equal to little f of x. So, we would say that big F of x is an antiderivative of little f of x. So, in other words, if we have one function uh, such that we take its derivative and we get another function, then we call it an antiderivative. So in this section, we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to analyze antiderivatives when the derivative function f prime of x and one value of the antiderivative, say f of a, are known. So in this first example, let's suppose that we have our derivative function f prime of t is equal to 1.8 to the t and f of 0 is given to be 2. So here we have our derivative function f prime of t and then we're told one additional piece of information. In particular, we know that the antiderivative when we evaluate at 0 has to be 2. Then we want to find the value of the antiderivative function at b when b is equal to 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. Okay, so let's see if we can solve this. So we'll start off by remembering that the fundamental theorem of calculus allows us to relate the derivative and the antiderivative. So the fundamental theorem of calculus states that the antiderivative at b minus the antiderivative at a has to be equal to the definite integral from a to b of the derivative of f dt. Okay, so this allows us to say that f of b minus f of 0 is equal to the integral from 0 to b of f prime of t dt. So all we've done here is taken the value a from the previous statement and made it a 0 in this next statement. And now we can move the f of 0 over to the other side of the equation and we get f of b is equal to f of 0 plus the integral from 0 to b of f prime of t dt. And this is just equal to 2 plus the integral from 0 to b of 1.8 to the t dt. And that's because we're given in the problem statement that f of 0 has to be equal to 2. And from here, we can take these different values for b and plug them in as the second limit of integration and use a calculator to find a bunch of different values. Uh, before I do that, let's just say f of 0 is equal to 2. So this was the information that was given to us. And now let's go over to Desmos and calculate the other ones. So now in Desmos, I'm first going to calculate f of 0 0.2 which by the fundamental theorem of calculus is equal to 2 plus the integral from 0 to 0 0.2 of our function 1.8 to the t dt, and this gives me a 2.12. And now I can repeat this process over and over again for all the different b values. So I get the definite integral from 0 to 0 0.4 this time of 1.8 to the t dt, and now I get a 2.451. Do it again. Now the integral from 0 to 0 0.6 of 1.8 to the t dt, and I get a 2.719. And now just two more times, we take the integral from 0 to 0 0.8 of 1.8 to the t dt, and I get a 3.021. And now finally, the last time, if I want to look at f of 1, I have 2 plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 1.8 to the t dt, and I get a 3.361. So now we'll go back over to OneNote. 
So now in OneNote, we'll write down this information that we found from Desmos. So we have f of 0 0.2 is equal to 2 plus the integral from 0 to 0 0.2 of 1.8 to the t dt. And this was equal to 2.212. We have f of 0 0.4 is equal to 2 plus the integral from 0 to 0 0.4 of 1.8 to the t dt. And this was equal to 2.451. We have f of 0 0.6 is equal to 2 plus 0 to 0 0.6 of 1.8 to the t dt. And this was equal to 2.719. We had f of 0 0.8 is equal to 2 plus the integral from 0 to 0 0.8 of 1.8 to the t dt. This was equal to 3.021. And now finally, the last one, f of 1 was 2 plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 1.8 to the t dt. And this last one was equal to 3.361. And that ends this example. Now we can also use ideas from chapter four to graph the antiderivative functions as long as we're given the derivative function in the first place. So remember that from chapter four, that if the derivative of the function is greater than zero, then the function is going to be increasing over that interval. If the derivative of the function is less than zero, then the function is decreasing. And if the derivative of the function is equal to zero, then the function is constant in that case. So we can use these three pieces of information to help sketch the graph of the antiderivative f of x just by using the graph of the derivative function. So in this first example, we have a graph of the derivative of this function f of x, and we have some values of different areas that are showing up along the graph here. And we're given that the antiderivative at zero is equal to 10, and the goal is to sketch a graph of the antiderivative function f of x. And we also want to give the coordinates of the local maxima and the local minima if they exist. So in this graph here, we have our curve f prime of x in blue, and then we have three different areas that are given. We have an area of equal to 14 in the first section, an area equal to 20 in the second section. Uh, the second area here is below the x-axis, so keep that in mind. And then the last section has an area of 12. All right, so the first thing to note is since uh, the derivative function is greater than zero from x equals zero, to x equals 2 and from x equals 5 to x equals 6 we have that our antiderivative f of x is increasing on the intervals 0 to 2 union with the interval from 5 to 6. So that's the first piece of information we can read off of the graph here. Then we can also look for where our antiderivative is decreasing. So since the derivative function is less than zero from x equals two to x equals five, we have that the antiderivative f of x is decreasing on the interval from two to five. So now we know where our antiderivative is increasing and we know where our antiderivative is decreasing. What else can we read off of this graph? Well, we also have a local maximum at x equals two and we have a local minimum at x equals five. So let's record that information. So f of x has a local max at x equals two and a local min at x equals five. And I know both of those things by using the first derivative test. So the derivative function is changing from positive to negative at x equals two, so that's a local max. And the derivative is changing from negative to positive at x equals five, so that's gonna be a local min. All right, so let's see if we can figure out the coordinates of the local max and the local min. So we'll find the coordinates of the local max. So how do I do this? Well, I know that the local max is at x equals two. 
So to find the output, I need to look at the value of the antiderivative at 2. But I can find this by using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is equal to f at 0 plus the integral from 0 to 2 of f prime of x dx. So we're given in the problem statement that f of 0 is equal to 10. So we have 10 plus, and now we need the definite integral from 0 to 2 of the derivative function. But that's just equal to the area under the curve from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So that gives us a 14. And we have that f of 2 is equal to 24. So the local max is at the point 224. We can also find the local, or we can also find the coordinates for the local minimum. And again, we do that by using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So f of 5 is equal to f of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 5 of f prime of x dx. And this is just equal to 10, again, plus the integral from 0 to 2 of f prime of x dx plus the integral from 2 to 5 of f prime of x dx. So we took that integral from 0 to 5 and split it up into two different integrals. And this will give us a 10 plus 14, which we found in the uh, previous, when we were finding the local maximum. So we have a 10 plus 14 plus this definite integral from 2 to 5 of the derivative function. And that definite integral is going to be a negative 20 this time because the area is under the x-axis. So 10 plus 14 minus 20, and this is going to give a 4. So we have a local min at the point 5, 4. And then finally, maybe one more thing we can say about the graph. f of 6 is going to be equal to f of 5 plus the definite integral from 5 to 6 of f prime of x dx. So this is just the fundamental theorem of calculus again. And this gives us a 4 plus 12, which is equal to 16. And that 12 is coming from this last area from x equals 5 to x equals 6. So the point 6, 16 is on the graph of the antiderivative. And at this point, we can sketch. So I'll just say now we actually sketch our function. All right, so we want to scale this right. So we'll go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then over here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's see, so we have a point at 0, 10, because we know that the antiderivative is 10 at x equals 0. Then we have a local max at 224, so we'll plot that point somewhere up here. Okay, then we have a local min at the point 5, 4, which is down here. And then finally, we have a point 6, 16. And from here, we can just take a curve and smoothly draw it through these different points. And this is a pretty good sketch of what the function f of x would look like. Okay, for the last example, again, we're given this graph of the function little f of x, and we have an antiderivative, which is given by the function big f of x, where the antiderivative at zero is assumed to be zero. And we wanna find the value of the antiderivative at b for b equals one, two, three, four, five, and six just using the geometry of the graph that's showing up here. So this is another kind of typical example you would see with antiderivatives. All right, so let's solve this one. So again, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have the following relationship. So the antiderivative at b is equal to the antiderivative at 0 plus the integral from 0 to b 
of little f of x dx. And in this case, f of 0 is just equal to 0. So this is the same as the definite integral from 0 to b of f of x dx. So let's start calculating some stuff. Let's look at when b is equal to 1. So f of 1 is equal to the definite integral from 0 to 1 of little f of x dx. And we can calculate this definite integral by looking at the area under our curve, little f of x. So the area we're looking at here is the area of this rectangle here. But this is just a 1 by 1 square, and so the area is equal to 1. So the antiderivative at 1 is just 1. We can move on to when b equals 2. And this time, we'll use the fundamental theorem of calculus, where we have an f of 1 here, plus the definite integral from 1 to 2 of f of x dx. So this is perfectly fine as well, because now we've already found f of 1. And this will be equal to 1. And then we have this area from x equals 1 to x equals 2. And that's going to be uh, the triangle. And the area of that triangle is just 1 half. So it's going to be half of that box uh, that has side length 1. All right, let's move on to when b is equal to 3. This time we can look at f of 2 plus the definite integral from 2 to 3 of f of x dx. And we know what f of 2 is. We just calculated it. It's 3 halves. And now we need the definite integral from 2 to 3 of little f of x dx. And this time we get this area. And this time the area is underneath the x-axis, so it's going to be negative. So we have 3 halves minus 1 half, and we're back at 1. All right, moving along. f of 4 is equal to f of 3 plus the integral from 3 to 4 of f of x dx. And we just found f of 3 to be 1. And now the integral from 3 to 4 gives this area. And that area is going to be a negative 1. So we have 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Moving along again. Now we're at f of 5. This is equal to f of 4 plus the integral from 4 to 5 of f of x dx, which is going to be equal to 0. And then this time we're looking at this area from 4 to 5. And that'll give us a minus 1. And then finally, the last one, let's look at f of 6. This is f of 5 plus the integral from 5 to 6 of little f of x dx, which is equal to minus 1. And we have this area right here. And that is going to give us a minus 1 half. So we end at minus 3 halves. So for this example, we just evaluate all of these different definite integrals by using geometry and uh, interpreting definite integrals as the area between a curve and the x-axis.